Okay, so now that you've decided to pick up the game, you're going to want to buy some singles to make particular parts of your pre-con deck better. So, since I don't have a sponsorship from these storefronts, I get to talk to you about the different places to buy magic products online without breaking any agreements, and at the same time, give my favorite place to buy cards a little nudge nudge wink wink for future sponsorship opportunities. The sites we're going to talk about today are in alphabetical order. Card Kingdom, Channel Fireball Marketplace, Star City Games, and TCG Player. They all have their pros and cons and we're just going to go over them quickly because let's be honest, this isn't a super in-depth topic. Space Coconut. Card Kingdom has a very nice search bar on the left that will let you search for cards you don't even know about. If I want to look for cards with Extort, I can type that in and look through what they have of the cards that they have with that mechanic. I can search for a generic set of terms for an idea I might have, and the system will serve up options that fit pretty close. By adding quotes, I can search for an exact line of play to find cards that will fit exactly what I'm trying to do. However, this site is just for their own store. There's only one price for these cards and there are a few options for alternatives. Once we pick a card we want, which in this case I think I should get Deadly Dispute from my Tesa deck, we can go through the process to buy it, but let's take a look at their shipping options. I couldn't find any documentation about their shipping prices, but a quick test hinted that free shipping for an order doesn't kick in until your order is over $40. Me and Mrs. C took a trip to Seattle and we did visit this store, and the cards we received when we bought them there were all in really good shape. I'm willing to bet that the cards they send out are equally as good. Next is the Channel Fireball Marketplace. I like the idea behind this one. Many stores can sign up to be a part of the marketplace and compete for business to sell their cards. Customers get the options to buy the cards they want at lower prices, and everyone is happy, unless you're buying from different stores. Unfortunately, there are a few businesses that have a similar shipping price model similar to Card Kingdom, where they might charge a higher price to ship the card unless you've ordered a specific amount of card value or number of cards. Some shops will charge 99 cents while others will charge 4 bucks, and there's no way to know without adding the product to your cart to see the difference. I added the same card from a few different stores, and not only did they sell the card at different prices, their shipping varied also, but I was able to find the best deal for the card I was looking for. But if you were looking for a set of cards, or a bunch of cards, and the store didn't have one of them that you were looking for, you're going to need to look elsewhere, and you'll find yourself looking for another storefront with reasonable shipping the same we did earlier. At least if you don't want to overspend on shipping. Then you'll have the inconvenience of having several different packages coming from different places, which is more of a personal nuisance, I guess. The marketplace is a great idea but the shipping might end up negating any savings you think you might be getting, especially if you have to order from different storefronts. I like the addition of the average sell price of the cards at the bottom of the page though. It's a nice touch for people who are more interested in the financial side of the cards they're purchasing. The Star City game search engine doesn't help you if you don't know the name of the card you're looking for, so searching for pieces will have to be done before you actually try to buy them from this store. It lets you search individual sets, but that might not be necessary if you're looking for singles for decks and ideas, so you'd probably be better off researching the cards beforehand. As for shipping, at $50 for two cards, I was still paying for shipping. So it looks like it's pretty static pricing, but it might go up if there were more cards and more weight added to the order. Even so, it looks like their average pricing for cards are actually lower than the averages we've seen so far. Finally, we have TCG Player. Again, we'll have to research what cards we want beforehand because their search engine doesn't offer the ability to search using Oracle text, but navigating the site isn't terrible. Now, looking for Deadly Dispute, we see that the first option is pricey at 6 bucks, but we can look at the other listings to see what other listings there are, and we find that there are many lower priced options. But most importantly, they list how much the shipping is below the card and will tell you the threshold you need to meet for free shipping. Once we meet that threshold and go to the checkout, 
we get this option to optimize the cart, and then it gives us the opportunity to get exactly what we need at the best price. If getting one package is more important to you, then you'd want to select the first option. But we're paying the store price for the singles we want, namely $6 for Deadly Dispute. But if we want to save 4 bucks, we can go with the two package option instead. If we add a bunch of cards from different sellers and then optimize, we get a cart with prices as good as we can get and the fewest number of packages by sellers that are verified by TCG Player. We can see in this example that Comic Book Store has shipping at $5, so we can either accept it or spend time looking for those cards with better shipping options by picking a seller and going through what they have directly. But to keep it simple, we could just accept the price we have since $5 shipping isn't so bad in this case, especially because of the value of the cards we're getting. I mean, Emrakul isn't cheap. So as you might have guessed already, my favorite place to order from is TCG Player. Their card optimizer helps lower the number of packages and keeps the total of the prices down. It's not perfect, of course, but it's better than the Channel Fireball Marketplace where there's no way to organize a card this way. However, if Channel Fireball could implement a system that does this with all of their sellers and gets their shipping prices and options out in the open, it might be a much better shopping experience and it might pull me away from TCG Player. Again, I know this isn't an exciting video, but now that we've covered the places you can buy cards reliably, I can start talking about the cards that interest me, and you'll already know where you can pick them up. If you have an idea of what you want the next Magic video to cover, let me know in the comments. I'm trying to decide between talking about individual cards and their uses in short videos, or talking about deck techs with budget and non-budget options. Let me know what you'd like, and we'll try it out. Like, sub, and share the video if you want to help the channel grow. And until next time, I'm Space Coconut, and you're welcome.